Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2014 NFL team preview for the Green Bay Packers. We're going to take a look at their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams. So let's start on the offensive side of the football with the quarterback position. If there were any questions about the importance of Aaron Rodgers and what he means to the Green Bay Packers, then we got a great answer last season as the Packers went 2-4-1 and in his absence, 6-3 and with him at the helm. Rodgers' pinpoint accuracy and dual threat capability makes him, in my opinion, the best quarterback in football. Matt Flynn has proven to be a capable backup and actually helped save the season last year for Green Bay, and I would look for undrafted rookie free agent Chase Reddick out of Boston College to give veteran Scott Tolzien a run for that third quarterback spot. Eddie Lacy put together an impressive rookie season last year, going over 1,100 yards at 4.1 yards a carry, and his contribution was key because it helped balance the offensive attack for the Packers. Both Lacy and five-year vet James Starks make an excellent one-two combo. Now gone is Jonathan Franklin, who suffered a career-ending injury, which now leaves the door open for another back returning from injury in DeWan Harris, who did well in his two starts two seasons ago. John Kuhn returns as the fullback, but you have to wonder how much value he still has with the abundance of H-back options now available. The Packers have two bona fide stars at wide receiver in Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb, and Nelson is the team's number one wide receiver because of his big playability and what he can do after the catch. And he also led the Packers in receiving last year, catching 85 passes for over 1,300 yards. Cobb was injured most of the year with a broken leg, but now he's back 100% healthy. And what makes him dangerous is his versatility and the fact that Green Bay can move him all around the formation. In Cobb's absence, Jarrett Boykin stepped up big time and showed his worth, but now he'll have to fend off three excellent rookies in Devontae Adams out of Fresno State, Jarrett Aberderis out of Wisconsin, and Jeff Janis out of Saginaw Valley State. Adams has number one and or number two wide receiver ability, which would allow Cobb to be ideally settled in the slot. Aberderis is an excellent route runner with dependable hands who could excel on the outside as well as in the slot, and Janis, in my opinion, is a Jordy Nelson clone, a big wide receiver with sprinter speed that's dangerous after the catch. At tight end, Andrew Corliss stepped in for Jermichael Finley and did an admirable job, but doesn't bring the same matchup problems to the table as does Finley, which is why you should keep an eye on two rookies in Richard Rodgers out of Cal and Colt Lyola, an undrafted free agent out of Oregon. Rodgers and Lyola are both athletic flex tight ends that are very good receivers that will be a great complement to Corliss. Offensive coordinator Tom Clements has a wealth of options at his disposal, and I think the Packers did a fabulous job in upgrading the talent on the flanks this offseason. Offensive line play got better as the season progressed for the Packers. On the edges, David Bakhtiari played very good football as a rookie after being thrust into action. He looks like a fixture at left tackle. That allows former first-round pick Brian Bulaga to return to the right side. And Bulaga missed all of the 2013 season with an ACL injury. His return gives the Packers two solid bookends. Don Barclay provides good depth not just at tackle but also at guard. And if former first-round pick Derek Sherrod can shake the injury bug, he'll bolster the depth even more so. J.C. Treader takes over at center, and Treader excelled at left tackle in college, but has the tools to man the most important position on the offensive line. Both Josh Sitton and also T.J. Lang are excellent guards and are a big reason why the running game was solid last season. Lane Taylor and rookie Corey Lindsley provide depth along the interior for Green Bay. There are some questions up front for Green Bay's defensive line. The biggest, in my opinion, is at the nose tackle position, where the hope is that B.J. Raji can become a disruptive force we saw back in 2010. The Packers also added depth by signing free agent Latroy Gian from the Minnesota Vikings and hope second-year player Josh Boyd, who played well versus the run, can continue to grow in the right direction. I would also keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Mike Penno from CSU Pueblo, a 6'4", 332-pound defensive tackle that has surprising quickness. Second-year player Detone Jones is expected to make significant strides at defensive end. This is his second year in the system, and we should start to see what we saw from him at UCLA. Mike Daniels led the defensive line in sacks last year with six and a half, and the plan is to use Mike Neal as a flex defensive end outside linebacker player this year in an effort to jumpstart the pass rush. Rookie third-round pick Kyrie Thornton out of Southern Miss also has a shot to make an impact as a rookie. Thornton's quickness off the ball made him a very good player for the Eagles, and Jarrell Worthy has the talent, but can he stay healthy is the biggest question.
It's the tale of two positions for the Green Bay Packers, starting on the outside with the addition of Julius Peppers. Peppers, even at 34, still has pass rushing value, and Green Bay plans to take full advantage of that by utilizing him situationally. That'll be the perfect complement to Clay Matthews, who's 100% healthy this year, giving the Packers a potent combination on the outside. Andy Mulamba was a pleasant surprise last year and looks to have a role, while the hope is that former first-round pick Nick Perry is healthy enough to fulfill his potential as the pass rushing specialist we saw coming out of USC. If Perry can stay healthy, he definitely makes a difference on this defense. And I would keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Adrian Hubbard out of Alabama, who in my opinion has Willie McGinnis-like skill set. Now he's a little raw technically, but he definitely has the upside that you look for. And last year's sixth round pick Nate Palmer still has a chance to impress because of his speed, but he'll be pushed by undrafted rookie free agent Sean Lewis out of Oklahoma State, who I had a second round grade on because of his ability in coverage. Inside linebackers, where I have the questions, AJ Hawk, in my opinion, doesn't make enough impactful plays to be a starter. He'll likely be pushed by either Jamari Lattimore or rookie Carl Bradford out of Arizona State. I feel like Lattimore will be much better paired next to Brad Jones, who fought through nagging injuries last year to finish third on the team in tackles with 86. Now, granted, both Hawk and Jones had been decent enough, but must become more impactful in order to elevate this unit. I believe the Packers got better in the secondary with the addition of rookie free safety HaHa ha Clinton Dix out of Alabama with his range and ball skills combined with what Morgan Burnett brings to the table. It allows Green Bay to be much more creative on the back end while being even more aggressive on the front end. Both Burnett and Clinton Dix are able to match up in space very well, and that will make Michael Hyde the backup safety who's a cornerback by trade. So if you want to go with the big nickel look, both Hyde and Burnett are able to hold their own underneath while Clinton Dix can play single high. The Packers boast excellent talent at the cornerback position. Sam Shields and Tremont Williams are very good players with ball skills. The two combined for seven interceptions and 31 pass breakups. Third-year player Casey Hayward is probably the best nickel back in the league. He missed majority of last year with a hamstring injury, but is back 100% and is looking to regain his rookie form. Devon House is a capable nickel dime guy, and the team is also high on two young players in Jabal Roll and rookie Dimitri Goodson out of Baylor. And Goodson's a former basketball player who only played one year of college football, so the upside here is tremendous with what he brings to the table. The good news is that Mason Crosby was back to his old self again, hitting 89% of his kicks last year, going 11 out of 14 for 40 yards plus. Punter Tim Maystay averaged 44 yards a punt last year while also handling kickoff duties. And the return game is in good hands with punt returner Micah High, who averaged 12 yards of punt return last year with one touchdown. I think he's ideally suited for punt return duties, while more straight line explosiveness is needed for the kickoff returner job, which is why I think rookie seventh round pick Jeff Janis could be an ideal candidate to alleviate some of the responsibilities from High. A healthy Aaron Rodgers now with a consistent ground game and a solidified offensive line with new weapons at receiver and tight end is more than enough reasons to be optimistic about the Green Bay Packers offense. And you also have to be as optimistic about a secondary, which was a weakness last year, now looks much improved, especially at safety. The biggest concern I see is the run defense. Have they done enough to get better in that capacity? Can the battery play well? That's B.J. Raji, A.J. Hawk. Brad Jones, can they play well enough to get the Packers defense out of the bottom half of the league? The road to the Super Bowl for the Packers goes as follows. Number one, the defense has to rise like the Phoenix. They have to get better than what they were last year. They don't have to be the best defense. They just can't be 25th ranked versus the run and also versus the pass. And the young wide receivers and tight ends have to complement the vets very well. If they can bring their own little mix to the table, it improves that passing game as a whole. And Mike McCarthy has to remember that balance is key. Remember, the reason why Green Bay was able to maintain their season last year without Aaron Rodgers was their ability to run the football. They were top 10 in both rushing and passing and third overall in total offense. So if he can remember that balance is the key, it bodes well for Green Bay moving forward. I have the Packers finishing first in the NFC North. They have the best quarterback in the game in Aaron Rodgers and a dynamic offensive attack. There's also enough playmakers at the second and third level of their defense to help improve the turnover numbers. Last year, they dealt with a lot of injuries. This year, they're healthy and a serious contender in the NFC.
And don't forget to order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths, an excellent book that you can find on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books available in both PDF as well as paperback form. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Packer Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.